الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلاۃ وسلام و نبی الکریم اما بعد وی بگین ان نیم اف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی سسٹین اے کریٹر اف دا ہیونس ان دی ارتھ دا ون یو نائی کم فرام دا ون وی ویل ریٹرن ٹو ہی ہیز نو پارٹنر ہی نیڈ نو ون وی نیڈ ام مور ان ہز لاسٹ میسنجر از رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم مائی ڈیئر ریسپیکٹڈ بردرز اینڈ سسٹرز اینڈ ایلڈرز اینڈ یونگ سٹرز ان اسلام السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ و برکاتہ Inshallah ta'ala, first and foremost, I would like to first uh, you know, apologize for not uploading. I said I'm going to do consistency, but uh, technical difficulties happen. My apologies. So I'm going to make up by doing short videos uh, today, inshallah. Uh, my goal, inshallah, and, and don't get mad at me if I don't do it, but my goal is to do a short five videos. Five videos, not one, two, three, but five. So inshallah, uh, I'm going to be uploading quite a few videos. So, inshallah ta'ala, today's topic in the lecture video is, is issues in society and how to overcome them. Basically, uh, what Islam says about it and how do we overcome those issues. So, when you look at the Prophet sallallahu you don't really know what, uh, what, it, what he went through in his, in his time when he was young to when he became the Prophet you know the you know prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how do he deal with these issues and how do he cope with what was going on because a lot of us don't know how to you know how to understand that a lot of us don't know what to do and how to cope with our issues and we complain about our issues being the worst issues right now but when you look at the prophet sallallahu and you look at the sahaba ajma'in you do not really see them complaining as much much and even if they did allah revealed an ayat in the quran where they answered the question for the for those people so when you look at people like umar radiallahu anhu and you look at people like you know ali radiallahu anhu and you look at people like uh, you know prophet sallam ibrahim uh, salatu wasalam and islam ismail alayhi salatu wasalam these are people that should be role models and if you look at people like aisha radiyallahu anha you look at aisha and you look at fatima radiyallahu anha these are sisters these are people that we should have as a role model but our society has Uh, screwed up and they're thinking the way that they can go look at people who are successful in this dunya but in the dunya but what are they do for you and the day of yom akayam what would they do for you the number one issue that i i i, I see in the society and i see the community is that we are far away far far away from the deen and we don't come close to the deen until month ramadan and then ramadan is over we are gone We don't know what Islam has to say and if Islam says something that is really bad for us to hear we will not listen we will go to someone who gives a fatwa saying it's fine to do haram it's fine to do bad see shaitan will work on you work on you and come and present the thing in an eloquent way you will never know you're doing haram you will never know you're doing bad because the shaitan will come in a way and work on your nafs Shaitan will work so hard the whole year and then the month of Ramadan he's locked up. And then your nafs overpowers you and you have an excuse that the Shaitan is the one who is committing the sin or making me commit the sins. Well no, your nafs is so old, your nafs has a disease in it and your nafs is going to overpower you and it's the way you think. And the way you think is the way you're going to correspond with your body and your body is going to react to the way you're thinking and the way you want to, your body to do these movements. These movements and things that we are doing today is the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us na'mah and we are now wasting time and sitting around moping and crying about things that we don't have. A month on a month time is going to go like this and we're sitting around here moping and crying. We should try to take benefit of Mount Ramadan. Try to come to the Dawi prayers and try to make sure we pray in some, one of us Allah in the masjid. Try to bring good qualities into our heart and onto our life so that people will look at us. People will say, wow, these Muslims are this and that. Because the perception of Islam is right now is what the media is talking about. We are going through a dark time and dark ages. <clears throat> right and media is betraying that we are bad people we are people of hatred we are people of who will blow up buildings 
rape women and do all those bad things. But in reality, we're never nothing like that. We're not even an inch like that. It's what media wants to people to think that we are bad people. But for us, it's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we react? And how do we cope? Uh, you know, uh, uh, how do we cope with it? And how do we understand why Allah is putting us through the test? Allah said, I love my ummah. If I, the people that I love the most, I will put them in more test. Meaning that if uh, Allah loves us so much, you know, Allah is the one who forgives. He will keep forgiving you if you go and ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if in you or showing off the bad deeds you have done on the day you're making him, Allah will not hide your bad deeds. Allah will show, I will show everything from the day you were born till you die. But then Allah says, if you do repentance to me for the sake of fixing yourself, then I will hide your sins. I will hide your bad deeds. I will hide that during the day you're making him. And brothers and sisters and elders and next of Islam, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. Issues right now are rising high in the sky, whether it's our women. One of the issues that I see is our women. They're getting abused. They're being told that to go back to their countries. They're being harassed. They're being told bad things. And people are mocking them, hurting them, raping them. And the issue of us sitting around and not doing anything. We need to get active. We need to get active and come up with solutions to fix the problem, to come up with a solution to where we can fix these issues that are happening in our society, in our communities, and the economy is going to go booming up, but the, the cause and effect, the cause and effect is the thing I'm telling you, if the effects of the things that they're doing is bad, it will always stay bad, and it's not for us to sit around and complain, you know, we need to stand up and we don't realize the way that sisters are going through the test. They wear the abaya, they wear the kab, they're wearing the, you know, the hijab. And you don't realize that 90 degrees outside, you know how hot it is? For us, it's really hard to even manage to be outside. When we're walking just to our car, we'll be like, oh my God, it's so hot. It's Ramadan, I can't even drink water. See, when the people halfway around the world, when the people halfway around the world are suffering, we here have the blessings and the yama, but we are not even grateful for that. We are abusing basically Islam. We don't want to hear what's the true Islam. We want to hear what Islam has been converted into. There's people who will add things into Islam which they want to hear, and they don't want to hear what you have to tell them. No matter how much they're going through, no matter how much pain they're going through. When you say music is haram, they hate to hear that, they will not care. You're barking, you're talking and you're uttering words, that's all they're going to go through their mind. They're not going to really think of what you just said. They will go to a someone, to a sheikh, or to the ulamas today, and the ulamas will say, the fat, what, give, a, give a fatwa. And the fatwa will be that music is halal or something is halal that's haram. The issue that we have right now is our youngsters and our youth. Our communities and our communities and our masajid and our masallah and a different, not just masjids and masallahs, but in general, our society can never ever accept our youngsters and our youth because they're doing such a great work. They're on the forefront right now. As you see doctors, you see engineers, you see lawyers, you see uh, ulamas, you see imams, you see youth coordinators, and a lot of these institutions and masajid, and, and you see all these masallahs, and you see different organizations, and the forefront is our youngsters, our youth. We have to give them a little more credit, but the issue is that our youngsters and the youth are facing bullying. Bullying is one of the issues that are going on. When the school year have starts, they're worried about the bullying and the harassment that they're going to get, and that's going to lead to them to have a de depression. And depression can be very small, but you can control. When you go to middle school, it's gonna get a little, it's gonna get a little uh, strong. Then when you get into high school, it will be a little more strong. And when it gets in college, it will go out of control. And it's gonna be crazy. And then it will be so bad because even if the best thing is happening to that youngster or someone, they will always go through. They will always nitpick something that is not right. They will never see the good side of the things that are happening. So we need to really give credit to our youngsters and our youth. And 
We try to make sure that we can engage the youth in our community because you never know what the ideas they have. You never know they can come up with a solution to our problems. And that is exactly what we need to work on. Working together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to understand the reality, brothers and sisters and youngsters and elders in Islam, is a lot of us really don't, can't accept because we don't take them, uh, we, don't, we don't think they're mature enough to handle the responsibility. But we have to understand why Allah is putting us through this test and why and how to overcome those issues rather than complaining about those issues. Another issue that we have is our brothers and our brothers and sisters and youngsters and elders. Some of them, they do good work. They do an act of good. Now you could see saying, wow, mashallah, they're doing an act of good. But they want something in return. They want something in return because they said we're putting our effort, we're putting our time and we're giving up our weekends or the whatever days that they were they're doing this act of good, kindness and act of good. Okay, now I want to, I want something in return. I want the status. I want people to recognize me. I want people to say mashallah. I want people to say this and that. And then that's when your heart's not pure. If your heart's not pure, you can do a hundred good deeds. Yes, you can do a hundred good deeds. And a lot of the hundred good deeds would not matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the eyes of Allah, you would nobody. Because your intention was not pure. So then there's no barakah in the act that you did. And you're no good to Allah. In order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't ever ask for anything in return. Think that I'm doing this for Allah. And if Allah is pleased with me, that's it. I don't know if Allah is pleased with me, but I'm going to do my best. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love his messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And I love Allah azza wa jal a lot. There is no thing in the world that I can get in this dunya. Which will be equivalent to the you know, day of Yom Qiyam. You know Jannah for those. Jannah for those is where you can ask for anything. And Allah will provide it. And whatever you're running after is temporarily. You will die one day. You will never. No one will. People will cry. People will cry. They will weep and cry. And for a week. And after a week, they will forget you. You will be nothing. You will be nothing to them. Only your family will remember you. But the rest of the people in the community that you were, you were sucking up to, you're running after. They will not care to even ask how are the family doing after with your tragedy. So why waste time over people who are not going to care for you? I saw a Facebook post. It said, make those your friends. When the ummah is laughing at you, they are standing next to you. They're not laughing at you with the, with the ummah. A lot of us make friends with people who have wealth, who are successful. But in reality, they're not even your friends. Because when the ummah is attacking you, they are they're the ones who join the ummah and their, their, their participation in, in that sense. So we kind of had to understand the, 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 the side that we're talking about. So the reality is that we need to wake up and we need to really think of what we're doing. Because we are role models for our youngsters. We are role models for, for the, 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 the people who are non-believers. If you realize the task of the manafiqeen, the manafiqeen is, it is basically when they are going through problems or they're going... So the, the reality the reality is that... For, for the, you know what the, the test for the manafi cleans is? It's this dunya. This dunya is jannah for those for them. This is jannah for them. This dunya that they're living in right now is jannah. And to in order to come into Islam, they have to give up that jannah. They have to give up what they have in this dunya to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the feeling that you get when you come to Islam, and then they're more motivated than us because our man is so weak, their man is so strong, they're able to overpower they were over, they're able to control themselves and do righteous deeds for the sake of Allah. We should wake up and learn a lesson from them. It's harder for them to leave this dunya behind and do shirk for Allah. Because they don't have anybody telling them what's haram, or halal. Don't have boyfriend, girlfriend. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. Falana, falana will, will be in that state. And we have to understand. And we have to work towards getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the reality is that how do we think is how do we correspond with our body and then that's how we're gonna do the actions. And in order to to do do something in that sense we have to really think what's the effects. I'm gonna do it I'm I'm the cause, okay, I'm gonna do something okay, but what's the effects 
would I, would I spread disease or would I be doing justice? And you don't want people and then your your feeding or prayer not to have anything nice to say to you. You should leave a legacy behind. We're sitting over here, we're talking about Ibrahim Salatu Wasalam, and we're talking about Ismail Ismail Ali Salatu Wasalam. We're talking about Umar Radiallahu Ali Radiallahu and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we're talking about you know these people. These people have left the legacy behind. You know, long time ago. And now you look at them in the khutbas and the lectures and talks are being done about them because these people can only solely care for the deen and they care for the ummah and they care what Allah has done for them. So when we are doing these acts, we have to wake up, we have to understand where we're coming from. The reality is that we need to have the thought process. We have to think. We have to think basically how do we how do we make a dent? How do we make a dent? People say that word dent. So uh, inshallah, I want you guys to kind of work on yourself. Um, the issues that I mentioned, I mentioned women. I mentioned the Sarat al-Mustaqim, how to stay on Sarat al-Mustaqim. And for the, the Munafiqeen, the, their test, again, is to leave this dunya behind and come into the Islam for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the test for us is our youth, our youngsters, who are the leaders, who are the upcoming leaders of our society and our community. And that's what we need to give them a lot of more credit. And so... I would like you guys to fix yourself before going to sleep. Think, what have I done today? What was my contribution to Islam? And what did I do during the month of Ramadan? So every day is like a clock. It's going really fast. Society is going at a really fast pace. We need to wake up and we need to we need to understand. When we're in the blessed month of Ramadan. How do we? How do we? Uh, you know. How do we deal with it? How do we get the benefit of Mother Ramadan? How do we gain knowledge? And if you gain knowledge, please spread the knowledge. And maybe because of your knowledge that you have, you can hit someone's heart. And maybe because that, they will change their life. And Allah will give you the reward. Um, if I said something that was wrong, I apologize sincerely. But if I said something good, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah uh, khair for watching the lecture video. Um, keep tuning in. Uh, inshallah, uh, my apologies again. I will try my best to do, uh, you know, consistency with the videos and um, just keep tuning in on the Alisa page, uh, YouTube channel, Alisa YouTube channel. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Uh, so, yeah, inshallah. Um, see you guys tomorrow and see you guys tonight because I'm going to be doing, I'm going to make up videos. I said five videos today, five videos tomorrow, five videos from now on. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.